Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start cobbling together a basic but working physics engine. And I'd like to stress, this is going to be a basic physics engine. We're not going to do any fancy stuff, nor are we going to really try to do things the right way just yet. This is really going to be one of those cobbled and hacked together things. It's just to get something working, so you can see a physics engine in action. And then from there, we'll start talking about some of the issues with the, well, basic hack together thing, and start building it into a more proper physics engine. And that's what we're going to start doing in this video. Before we begin, however, there's a few things I'd like to bring up, because I did a small bit of refactoring off screen. And I mean a small bit of refactoring, there's only two things I did. First off, as you may have noticed, our test code that we had in main is gone. What I've done is, under all my physics colliders, like bounding sphere, AABB, and everything, I've added a new function called test. If you look at the implementation, all I've done is I've moved the test code into there. And also I changed the print statements into asserts. So now it's a little bit more like a unit test, and we'll know if we break something later on. Second thing you may have noticed is everything's now nice and neatly organized into folders. This way, it's more clear where what piece of code has come from. So all the code from the physics series is going to be in the physics folder. All the code from the ren from rendering and such is going to be in the rendering folder, and so forth and so on. So that way, it's a little bit more organized, and hopefully the code's a little bit more useful to people who may not necessarily have followed along with the rendering series or the physics series or whatever. So, yeah. And with that, let's go ahead and let's get started with our new physics object class, which again, I created off screen. Now, this is going to be our representation of an object in our basic cobbled together physics engine. And this is going to be pretty basic. So first off, I'm going to include our math, which is now in dot slash core slash math3d.h after the refactoring, so it's changed slightly because there's oh, dot dot slash, excuse me. Yeah, so the includes have changed slightly with the refactoring, so hopefully that doesn't throw you off too much, but yeah. And for our physics object, we're going to have two parameters, or member variables, for now. It's going to have a vector 3f, which for the m underscore position, so this is the position of the object, and a vector 3f for the m velocity of the object. So this is all we're going to have right now. We're not going to get into collision yet, although we're, that's going to come pretty soon. Again, the whole point right here, just get something working. So we have position, we have velocity, and I, of course I'm going to have constructors and getters and such off screen. So one moment. Okay, so we have a constructor and getters like before. And now let's add the one function we care about for now with this. And that is going to be void integrate. And it's going to take in a float for delta. And what this is going to do is, based on the velocity of the, the physics object, it's going to update the position. And that's what all this is going to do. Later on, this is going to be slightly more complicated, but that's really the main point of this. So, let's go ahead and let's implement this. So if I go to physicsobject.cpp, which again, I created the file off screen to save a bit of video time, we're going to have void physicsobject colon colon integrate. So, how on earth are we going to update the position? Well, actually, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to say m position plus equals m velocity times delta. And that's all I'm going to do here. Oh, and I, I didn't mention this, but the delta is supposed to be like how much, how much time are we integrating over? How much time are we simulating? So, of course, the more time we're simulating, the more we're moving. And that's why we're scaling velocity by delta. 
And that, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take position, we're going to plus equals velocity times delta. That's all this is going to do for now. So, with that, let's go ahead and let's do some basic testing. And I'm going to comment this back out. So, in fact, I'm going to set up the test code off screen to save some video time. Okay, so I set up some basic test code here. We've created a test physics object. It starts off at one unit on y, and it's moving at a speed of one on x, two on y, and three on z. And then we integrate with 20, which pretty much just means find the position after 20 seconds. So after 20 seconds, we calculate it the new position and velocity, and our new position, we've moved 20 units on x, which makes sense because our velocity was 1 on x, and we moved for 20 seconds. It's 41 on y, which makes sense because our velocity was 2 on y, we moved for 20 seconds, 20 times 2 is 40, and we're already at 1, so 41. And finally, for z, we had a speed of 3 on z, and we moved for 20 seconds, so 3 times 20 is 60. And that is how our basic physics object works. So, that's just about all I wanted to cover in this video. I'm going to go ahead and move this code into a static test method in physics object off screen. And, of course, I'm going to change the print statements to asserts. And that's all I'm going to do for this video. So in the next video, we're going to set up a rudimentary physics engine, which can take a list of physics objects and perform the simulation phase of the physics engine, where it takes a group of objects, simulates them moving around. And if we have enough time, we might even be able to hook that up to our rendering engine so we could actually see objects flying around in space and such. So that'll, that's what we'll be doing in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And... I'll see you next time.